Give it to me one more time. Woman's got that song stuck in my head. Oh boy. See if I can get this correct. I mean, I'd really like to just velcro this thing right to the damn Uzuma what's it. <clears throat> ah! You're out of orientation. Yeah. Hmm. Good morning, Big T. I'm glad you're here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm kind of going to leave that camera right there because that's my phone. And I'm going to close this thing out and we'll see if I can get to my uh, my channel here. So give me a second. Good morning, Casto. From the Casto. Casto, C-A-S-T-O. Good morning. How are y'all doing? So what I'm trying to do is to get to my channel, and hopefully we can see. I am live now, so it's going to. I'm live now, so. I'm just going to read the comments I'm just going that I have coming in, hopefully. Got it. Oh, I got a new pin chat. Good morning, good morning. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, okay. Good morning, Mr. Glenn Urban. Good morning. Raining in Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Uh, yeah, so it's the day after Christmas, everybody. Day after Christmas, I've got my Hershey chocolate mug. This is like a 16 or 8, 20 ounce cup. I didn't fill it completely up, though. Good morning, Utah. Jordan Fan. Morning. So I'm going to try and do this a little differently. I've got a I'm really kind of unprepared. So, if I do it this way, maybe I can get you all where I want you. Oh, yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Hello from the Netherlands. Yeah, so that is that is actually streaming in real time, so we're pretty good there. Uh, yeah. I guess that'll work. What I'm going to do now is actually go here, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say Hi. How's everybody doing? Alex the Dutch Dairyman, you, you milking cows? Ah, you've got to be done with that a long time ago. It's got to be about midday there. Midday? Yeah, about midday there. What are you, about five, six hours ahead of me? So did everybody have a nice Christmas? Anybody out there have a nice Christmas? I know I did. God, I just can't get this damn thing correct. Uh-oh. -uh. That was weird. Maybe if I do this. <clears throat> there we go. <coughs> I was hoping, everybody. I'm always milking. Have milking robot. You got milking robot? You know. Well, let's talk about a milking robot. Uh, back in 2014, me and my daughter went to uh, Belgium, France, England. And we took a tour of a Belgian, Belgian dairy there where they had Deloitte, two uh, milking robots, and they could milk about 60 cows per day, all day long, so he had about 120 cows, and it was neat, it was neat to watch, and it worked out really, really well. Uh, the cost of that robot, though, was pretty damned expensive, it was like 100 grand. Now, I... Victoria, Australia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Wisconsin. Hello, Wisconsin. That 70s show was awesome. So anyway, he was milking about 120 cows, but there was a quota and they couldn't exceed it. Or uh, I guess it, we, I call it a quota. Maybe it was a quota. There was a limit to how many cows you could have at that time. And he was all thrilled that by the next year they were going to uh, do away with that. And he could have as many cows as he wanted, and he was going to upgrade and do all this stuff and become, well, when you do that, you have more, more, more everything. So if you have more cows, you got to have more robots. Uh, if you have more cows, you got to have more feed. you got to have more everything. Everything is more. And, of course, you produce more milk. Well... <coughs> <clears throat> when you produce more milk, what do you end up with? Happy holidays, Edith M Mungaya. Actually, it's Merry Christmas. The next holiday is uh, Happy New Year. 
Uh, I say Merry Christmas. I don't know why. Good morning, farming, fixing, and fabricating, feeding cows here on a very nice, crispy morning. Hope you had a great Christmas. Well, we survived it. We did survive it, and uh, life is good uh, for that matter. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, anyways, back to these robots. Uh, well, do you have robots, Andy? Do you have do you have robots for milking cows? I don't. I don't have the time to watch your videos as well as I'd like to. Um, but, you know, I didn't know if you had robots or not. Uh, but anyways, with these with these robots, they, they this these guys in Belgium, they were they were just thrilled to death. And when I got on the bus, uh, all the guys that were with us, I says, well, that's a nail in their coffin. And they're like, yep, sure is, because they were out near that. Uh, they are cool, but um, they were out in the midwest most of those guys were i was from the east coast obvious because i'm from new jersey um we don't we have double 20 parlor okay okay yeah that's cool um double 20 and you're hopping you got mexicans running those things or you you got mexicans running those things that shit drives me nuts um not not saying that your guys are bad or anything but you know i just i just think that the yeah i would go with robots before i went with uh before I went with Mexicans, I definitely would, you know, there's just, I deal with the Mexicanos down in the, and they're not Mexicans, well, some of them are Mexicans, but Guatemalans, Argentinas, uh, Mexicans, they're down, most of them are Mexicans in the mushroom industry, but I do, the farm lady, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, I was going to watch your video today, because I want to see what it's like in uh, Nigeria, yes, Nigeria. So anyway, the uh, that if you don't know, the farming lady is a young lady who farms fish farms and other things. I haven't watched too many of her videos because she doesn't have too many. She just kind of started, uh, but I've watched a couple of them now, and she farms in Nigeria. Check her out. Um, she does speak English. So, but anyways, with these uh, ro with the Mexicans, they're just when they had the barracks. Uh, the barracks on site, there was always knife fights and things like that. It was really tough. If the welfare system wasn't what it was, we wouldn't need migrant workers. I agree 100%. Oh, do I have a theory and thoughts on this. So uh, you've probably heard me talk about fixing the welfare system and how to do it. And nobody's going to do what I say because, you know, I'm just some dumb farmer from New Jersey. But uh, I could fix the welfare system within a year. Within a year. You know, I really would uh, within a year to four years. And I think you guys have all heard um, have all heard my thoughts. And uh, no, not drug tests. I mean, drug tests. Nobody would pass a drug test. But yes, I agree with the drug test. Um, but now guess what? How do you think the government is getting around the drug tests? You know, the people the working people of America that want drug tests, uh, they make the drugs legal. Make the drugs legal, then the drug test isn't necessary because they can go home and smoke whatever they're smoking or inject whatever they're injecting, especially in Seattle, Washington, in Washington State. They can do whatever the hell they want. They can do coke. They can do crank. They can do acid. They can do whatever they want and then go to work in the morning. You can't do anything with the drug test because it's legal. Now, that's, that's, that's how they get around that. But no, my thoughts on uh, welfare and, uh, and voting – I can fix the voting system very, very quickly as well, uh, and that's really simple. Um, your voter ID card could be your uh, W-2. Yep, that's it, W-2. Here's my Social Security number, here's my signature, and here's where I work. If you don't present a W-2, um, then you don't get the right to vote because if you're not working, you shouldn't have a say in where our tax money goes. That's just my thoughts and feelings on that. Our workers are all good guys, family oriented, and want to do is earn an honest living. That's right. Uh, that's great. But my experience over the last 21 years of dealing with them is that it's they love to fuck. That's one thing they they do, whether they got a family member or not. They love to fuck, and they'll fuck the other guy's wife and do that stuff too. They just they just love to do it. And uh, they like knives over guns, definitely like to slice one another up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it's crazy. 
Some of them are very, very good. Some of them are very, very bad. Most of them are just there for the social aspect, and maybe they'll get done what they're supposed to get done. And that's why the mushroom barns are all going to robotic pickers. And uh, if you remember, the candidate, Mr. de Blasio, candidate for president, uh, and he is now he is still the mayor of New York City. Mr. de Blasio wanted to tax companies that were going to robotics and doing phasing out uh, workers. Well, when you've got a migrant community that is the only ones that will do this job because Americans are too good or white people are too good to do it, um, robotics are the answer. So the mushroom growers are now going into these robotic pickers where they can set that computer to to pick a certain size mushroom and that will go down there. No human contact at all. It just at the end of the of the barn. That's where the mushrooms come out and they come out pre box weighed and perfect every time um, because uh, these uh, migrant workers, we won't call them Mexicans, but we'll just call them migrant workers. God, I got to blow my nose. Migrant workers get paid by the pound. So they're constantly skimming, skimming. They're constantly at nine pounds, nine and a half pounds, trying to get that half a pound. Uh, we'll talk about Farmer MD in a minute. Um, that's, yeah, I'm going to show it. I'm going to show that one. They hid that. They hid that one because of a bad word. But uh, so anyway, they're going to automatic robots and de Blasio wanted to tax them to stop them from doing this. A robot, even if it's a milking robot, like, you know, Andy, you're running double 20s. Um, if you took four robots, there's $400,000 or more, probably $440,000 or $80,000, $480,000 to put those robots in. But you're, you're losing, what do you got? Four guys on that line, two on each one. I imagine two on each one. Robot motors only handle about 60 cows a day. We aren't set up correctly for adequate cow flow with robots. Absolutely. I agree that if you're an older dairy farm, a lot of, and milk isn't, let's face it, you're not making that much money in milk. I mean, uh, you're always at the mercy of the creamery. And just when you think you're going to get ahead, the fuckers take your money away. And that's just the way it is. I was in the dairy business where we milked. We milked the most, we were milking 88 cows at the most. At one time in a stanchion barn, a 60 cow stanchion barn. So we would milk 60, turn out, you know, it's 820, and then come back in and milk the, another 28. You know, we we turn out 30 and then bring in 28. So we were doing 88 cows. Uh, we did that for to the point where we were, well, let's face it, we were over capacity. Yes, you would have to redesign the whole entire... Actually, you wouldn't redesign the barn. You would just uh, put in loafing pens and robotic manure. Two in the parlor, one moving groups. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's pretty good. So, you're paying those guys, what, 40, 40 50,000 a year? 40, 50,000 a year. Do that over 10 years, $450,000. Uh, four, four to five, four to $500,000 thousand dollars in in labor costs, not including the insurance and other things that happen because humans make errors and they break shit. Um, you know, so you're looking at half a million dollars over the course of 10 years. If you are serious in growing or making milk, uh, I would definitely be serious into looking into robots um, over human entity because human beings are unreliable. These machines today Somebody's giving me the finger, so I'm going to show it because I'm an asshole, and that's fine. Good for you, if you think. Or is that a thumbs up? No, that's definitely the middle finger. <clears throat> if you're you don't need a building uh, for a parlor, no extra people to do the work, and cows produce more milk with less stress for, for the cows. Absolutely. Under robots, they do. Uh, rotary, I've been in rotaries. They do wear out. 72 cow rotary barn I was in one once a long time ago, uh, maybe 15 years ago before YouTube. Uh, I was in a uh, 12 cow parlor over here that was a rotary and it was neat. I, I you know, it was really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I still think that uh, a robot where a cow decides to uh, milk herself is 
is less stressful on the cows and the guys in uh the guys in uh in Belgium where I was they were their production actually went up and the lifespan of the cow went up she milked more longer and lived longer under the less stressful conditions and the loafing pens that they had were they had these old automatic barn scrapers it was the coolest damn thing these little things, just little robots that would go around and and sweep the manure, scrape the manure, the little rubber scrapers into this, uh, well, into a trench that uh, would flush. It had water. It was a water flush system that would go out into a slurry store. Probably one of the coolest setups I'd ever been in, and I did videotape it. I don't know if I've got it up here on YouTube or not. One day from five weeks, COVID... Uh, fever, isolation, spent Christmas alone at home in quarantine. Well, Mobile Moto, I'm sorry. Uh, I have heard a lot that the rope, you have one of those too? Oh, you do. Yeah, so you're one of those lazy farmers that doesn't know what a scraper is. you got the little robot that charges itself. I'm just joking. Nobody, no farmers are lazy. All the lazy farmers went out in the 80s. And that's the truth. Yeah. Uh, and I hacked into the robot milking machines and getting 10,000 from farmers to all of them milk their cows. 10K from farmers to all of them milking their cows. I know. Uh, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Jeremy Nunn. I do. I have pants on, Jeremy. I'll show that. Can you believe that they, they flagged that? I'm lazy as hell. <laughs> now you're not. Now you're not. So anyway, uh, oh wait, 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 West, we have alley scrapers that run all the time. Yeah, see, that's cool. All right, so hoodwinked by an angel. He got flagged. What is going on with this thing? I was Christmas in the Philippines. It was very nice and quiet. I had a nice time with eight or so close friends. Please say hello to your family for me and have a safe New Year's. You too, Michael. You too. Yep, stay, keep it real in the Philippines, baby. <laughs> Everything that can be done with oil pressure shouldn't be done with blood pressure. There you go. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So, you know, parlors, I think parlors are more common in the United States than they are overseas and or in the European Union and the Europe and England because they are now no longer a part of the EU. Kudos to them. Thumb in their nose to the uh, European Union. They didn't want it in the first place. Labor-saving devices, use them whenever possible. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to come up and see Andy, though. And I'd love to go see uh, Alex out there in the Netherlands and Bram Haminga. I'd like to see him as well because he came over to see me. Uh, and uh, what a cool guy. But, uh, yeah, I think it would be really neat. I'm going to be in New York as soon as it... I think they've got snow up there right now, and I, I got to do that damn fodder. We had, I had a problem with parts that I got from uh, Messick's, and it screwed me up. I'd have had that stuff done already if it wasn't for that crap. Um, and our farms this sure didn't feel like not Christmas, but I'm just glad it's over. I got corn and soybeans to haul. Well, yeah. Um, anyways, I have five months left to retire from the Navy, ready to start my farm. Oh, Stephen, uh, I can't say that now is the best time. To, well, no time is the best time to start farming, but uh, yeah. Yes, Wes, try and pull that off and stop in. Well, I'm about, what am I, about three hours from you up there. I'll be in Marion, not Marion, not Marion, sorry. I'll be in Montgomery, New York. That's where I'll be. Yeah. Uh, You had three feet. Yeah, you guys should have lost a lot of snow yesterday. I'm hoping that you did. I have to make a, I got to call Cosmos up and see what it looks like because it's supposed to get cold. Yeah, Montgomery's not far. Well, if you're not far from Montgomery, how much snow is on the ground? Is it just about gone? Oh, yeah, when you wrote retarder, that did it. Error, try again. It won't let me show that. You wrote retarder on there, and it won't let me show it. 
isn't it amazing how this this algorithm picks out the stupidest things? And that's what's wrong with my channel. Haven't had any snow in Nova Scotia? Yeah, you're off the beaten path. You don't get that lake effect up there. Is the golf ball cannon coming out? Actually, you know what I was thinking of doing with that thing? Was putting some kind of makeshift fins on it, filling it about halfway with water, and then pressurizing it and pulling that thing and see how high in the air it would go. Because that thing would go. Oh, it sucks. I've begun to hate YouTube. Yeah, YouTube's getting to the point. Getting to that point. Will you put the dozer blade on the 5020 for moving slow? Probably not. Um, I got so many better things than that to move snow. It's not even worth it. In Holland, the farmers must be reduced. The government and the energy companies will use the ground for solar panels and windmills. It's a disgrace. Oh, they're doing that shit here, too. You go through the city, right, where they use the most electricity in the United States here, and you see these huge buildings, no solar panels on top of them. You get outside the city, you'll see a big field full of solar panels piping it to the city. Well, why not put it on the roof of these buildings? They're already wasted space up there. Uh, how about parking lots? In England, when I was in England, the uh, parking lot, the roofs were solar panels above the cars. And I believe those actually tilted with the sun to get the maximum out of it. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to teach him how to sled off the roof for sure. For sure. I haven't used the wet line kit. The cities are heat islands. They are. They really do create. Yes, they are. They're about, you know, five, five degrees hotter. Center of the universe in southwest England. Peter James. It's okay. Biden will get them old coal plants up and running. No, no, he won't. Biden's useless. Here in Ireland, it's wet and windy, but no snow. Tilting the panels is a waste. Fresnel lenses will do. They call them Fresnel lenses. I thought they were uh, uh, not Fresnel lenses. Uh, it starts with an F, but it's not Fresnel. Um, focal lenses, but they're Folksum. Folsom. Folksome lenses. I think that's what you mean to say. Merry Christmas from Lithuania. Yeah. Too cold to fly today. Yeah, it probably is. You don't have anything to spray anyway, do you? Folksal lenses in white houses. Not Fresnel. Folksal. The Folksal lens. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I'm wrong on that one. I might be, but I don't think it's Fresno. I think it's Folksal. The Folksal lens. It was like this stepped uh, lens. Uh, da, 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 da. Have Cosmos or Nick baked anything themselves this year in New York State or is their equipment not in New York? They sold their equipment. Uh, they don't have bailing equipment anymore. They did away with it. They sold it to a guy by the name of Isaac and... Uh, God, what the heck is his name? last name? Isaac? Oh, anyway, he, uh, God, why can't I remember his name? Anyways, Isaac bought it, and then he turned around and moved to uh, Wyoming, and he was going to bail for Nick and Nick out there, Wyoming, and uh, Isaac Horst. That's correct. You know him? You know him? It was Isaac Horst. Uh, yeah. So anyway, Isaac moved to Wyoming and he was going to be doing the bailing all through Wyoming, Montana, and down into Colorado. And, uh, I don't know what happened. I was supposed to go to Colorado. I was going to be set in the middle of 10,000 acres right outside of the Denver airport. And I was to bail that. Uh, I was going to buy a brand new baler and a brand new stack wagon. Just one. 10,000 acres isn't terrible to do with one baler in straw. Two bales of straw, two bales of the acre. <clears throat> no bean plant chasing me down. We'd, uh, Fresnel lens. Okay, so I'm wrong, but I, I'm kind of shocked, but I thought it was a uh, straight shooter. Well, there you go. Oh, 
I'm done with row crops, sick of losing money. We grow produce and do really good without having to borrow 300000 to operate. Borrowing 300000 that's nothing. D. Laval milking robot. All After all updates, runs like a deer. Yeah. Aiden Brook move a lot of material. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Uh, they wanted to... They, I've had that corn fodder bailed up for them, and they said that they were going to purchase it and move it for me, and and uh, there it sets under tarp, looking good. I do. Shake it, shake it. We well, got them holy pants on. I like my holy pants. This girl has the most worn out shorts. Check these things out. Well, I'm I can't. not going to show my worn out shorts. They'll see my underwear. What color? Black. Let me see. No. No, she won't let me. I saw them already. Or are you kidding what me? Do you, what do you want for breakfast? I want food. Kind. Kind you eat. Same thing like yesterday? What was yesterday? Hash browns. And oh, yeah. If you make the hash browns. Thicker? Thicker. You want it thicker. Not super thick, but thicker. A woman likes thicker. Did you hear that? I'm just saying. She yeah, has. She's holy. Holy <laughs> moly. Shut up. Women like thicker. Your mother is downstairs and you're talking trash. She's sick. <laughs> and then others we had done away with the robots. They costed way too much for mechanics to come out and lost time all over the day. Now we have rotary parlor, just two hours to milk 150 cows. Okay. Mary Pissman. Da, 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 the woman like dicker. You know, thicker. That's what she says. My wife is funny. Hope farming is better in 2021. Trump four more years. There's something gonna happen. We can we can talk about Donald here in a minute, but they're planning something. Something big is going to happen. I don't know what it is. I don't care. But I did have some good looking corn this year. Yeah, thank you. What they were the pants when they were new? Yeah, they are. The the thing with robots. We can go back to robots. Um. Uh oh. Our hay barn burned down Christmas Eve. We lost 4,000 small bales and probably lost $50,000 in hand tools. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, oh, Jesus. That's not cool. No, I still have the West Endorf loader. It's on the front of the uh, 8120 right now. I used it to move snow. My wife's accent, actually, I, I beg to differ. My wife's accent is Filipina. Uh, her mother lives here, so yes, she uh, uh, she talks a lot of Tagalog right now, and so it's kind of hard to speak with her after she's been talking Tagalog all day because she gets things backwards, everything backwards. So you know, like if if uh, why is that thing doing that? That's a silly ass thing. USB connection. I hate this thing. I hate. You know what? I hate GoPros. I use them, but I hate them. To gal, I guess. Good morning, Wes. Everyone thumbs up. Screw tube. Uh, Stephen Beasley. Uh, the retort from the riot supporters. Oh, God. I don't want to talk. Does your wife know all about your girlfriends? Merry Christmas. I don't have any girlfriends. No, but I have her. And she's my wife, and I love her very much. So I don't think that there's going to be any girlfriends. So anyways, um, yeah, with these robots, there is a rigorous maintenance program that you have to do. And hold on a second. Where are you, Thomas? Well, I think my phone is right there. What is that? Well, I think I can look that up here someplace. Anyways, I'll look it up later. Uh, yeah, I lost my GoPro. We're going to have to pick up a couple more. Definitely a love-hate thing. With them, I hate them. They're, they, the batteries don't last. Yeah, you could go and get the problem with doing what the uh, Welker Farms did was when you do that, you have to you have to pull this thing. Let's see. I don't like doing this, but there's a see this thing here. You have to pull that door off, which exposes that to lots of dirt. We don't want to do that. Yeah, robots would need a lot of maintenance. They do need a lot of maintenance, but uh, I think the early robots, and a lot of people have said that, 
Yeah, I heard about the Nashville bombing, suicide bombing. Um, yo, Clicky's still here. This is Clicky. Clicky the camera, still here. Yeah, they need a lot of maintenance. I guess that's, I'm getting distracted here. But uh, if you do the maintenance all along, you know, and I'm going to say something that's probably going to piss off a lot of dairymen. But when I buy a piece of equipment, if I hear that it's been on a dairy farm, I won't buy it. Uh, right? That's the truth. We were dairy. We were dairy. And I know the drill. When you're a dairyman, you you uh <laughs> you're interested in the cows you're not interested in repairing the equipment um and when i was raised my dad my grandmother they were they were cows 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 and they don't know what a grease gun looks like my father to this day i can honestly say would not pick up a grease gun it was easier for him to change universal joints in my opinion than it was for him to grease the damn thing before he went to work. Since I have been the uh, the guy with the grease gun, I have not changed a universal joint in so long I can't even remember. Uh, you do have CDs, and they wear out. I do have to buy two new CDs for the bailers. Um, but as far as universal joints go, I don't think I've changed a universal joint in 20 years. Uh, it's just cheaper to buy a, a pack of grease, you know, a, a tube of grease and run that. So dairy farmers are really, really hard on stuff. And they, the maintenance side of it is not at the forefront. They're more into rations and butter fat and production. You know, what what can I do to push this animal to the point where I get the most out of her, you know, and uh, <laughs> TDNs and, and uh, you know, soil tests for crops, you know, and uh, manure management and all that stuff. When it comes down to it, the equipment to get that product into their silos, ah, we didn't got time for that. Just go run it. Now, there's some dairymen, I'm going to say that Andy is one of them, uh, who maintains his stuff because I see it in his shop when he does it. Um, yeah. So... Anyways, when when I buy a, go to buy a piece of prop piece of equipment, oh, you're here. Eastern Shore Farmer is in the house. Did you make it home safely? You had like an 11 hour drive, and you make it like it's you know going down to the shore. Do I have any good place to get tractors rebuilt? I just do them myself. So yeah, well good. I'm glad you made it home safely. Did you bring that lovely lady home with you? Or is she out in Ohio? Tons of snow out there. Yeah, I heard that. Dairy farmers mentally mentality. I ran it yesterday till it run it'll run today. That's exactly it. The shit spreader tractor. Oh cool. That's good. I'm glad she came home with you. So uh, when are you guys gonna you better marry her? You know, she, she puts up with a lot of shit from you, so you better marry her. Because if you don't, she may just say, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm going back to Ohio. But uh, put a ring on her finger. Your old man wants you to marry somebody. I know that for a fact. She hasn't asked you yet? Give me her phone number. I'll call her up and tell her that she needs to ask you to marry her but for and and she's got to put her name on your property so that you don't leave her that's the way that should go worst injury on the farm my injury i got caught in a big baler um i don't know if anybody ever heard this story that anybody that's on here have you has anybody heard the story it's on youtube of when i got caught in the big square baler <laughs> No. You have not, not yet. Yes, some of you have. Yes. I think I remember that from years ago. Yes, it is. Your foot. Yes. Okay. So back in 2011, 2011, it was 2011. 
2011, it was a very wet year. And, uh, okay, somebody called me a dumbass. I will allow that because I don't think I should be in control of the she watches, I meant, damn auto spell. Yeah, I wasn't sure. You're calling me a sissy. I might have to drive down the eastern shore today and break my foot off up your ass. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway, so she watches me? Oh, well, that's nice. So I got these glasses, you know, and I'm going to talk about my foot in a minute because I have no problem. So I went in to get these glasses. These are reading glasses. Um, they're pretty much... The, the doctor's like, I can't believe you can notice that you your eyes are not right. I was like, well, what are you talking about? He says, they're not bad, Wes. They're like 125 and 129 or some damn thing. He says, they're slightly different. And he says, 99% of people don't notice that small amount of, of uh, variation in their eyes. I was like, well, I read a lot, you know, and I do read a lot. There's good money in doing oversized work. Anyways, uh, so when I went in there, I said, I want to look like Theodore Roosevelt. That's what I want. I want his glasses. And they're like, oh, monocle glasses? Says, they were not monocle glasses. I said, they were these. And I found them. Can you believe this? I found these glasses. And back in the day, these were extraordinarily expensive glasses for Teddy Roosevelt to have. And I called you a dumbass for hurting your foot. My apologies. No, no, I'll allow it. I was stupid. I'll agree with you. It was dumb. They are frameless. These are titanium uh, frame or uh, arms on here. Um, but they said that it doesn't really matter because you went through the glass. The glass is still glass. It will break. So don't be dropping on it. And uh, I've been following him for quite a while. Farmer MD doesn't deserve that. So we're going to talk about him too. But first of all, first off, so I got these glasses. Do you think I look like Theodore Roosevelt? I mean, I guess I could shave this and leave this and I'd be okay. Best set I've ever had. Well, this is the first set I've ever had. And believe me, when I look away, I feel like I'm drunk. But uh, when I'm reading and stuff, it, it makes it a lot easier. When you get to be our age, Wes. They say your eyesight is the second thing that goes. Can't remember what the first thing was. <laughs> That's funny. You thought you were going to get me on that one, but you know what? There's a wonderful product that I take, and I've, I've used this for a couple of years now. It's called Secretagog, and the first thing you lose is your mind, obviously, but uh, the uh, achy knees, achy joints, um, unwanted weight gain, uncontrollable weight gain, let's put it that way. Uh, you, uh, it's called Secretagog, and there's a lot of people that find it to be snake oil, snake oil, but I've never felt better. It works really good. Didn't do shit for my eyes, but it, it did. Everything else is fine. I rise to the occasion at will. I have no problems there. Um, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> okay, so my foot. So back in 2011, it was a wet, rainy year. Uh, it was a pain in the ass. I had a problem with a baler. Uh, my BB960A had blown up. Carrots for your eyes, beta carotene, absolutely. The uh, I have plenty of that in my diet, so we're good there. But it was wet, it was nasty, and I had a rock get up into my BB960A, and it broke the pins on the plunger, just destroyed it. Destroyed it, so I ended up with a BB9080. That's what I bought, and it happened in August put me about two weeks behind before I could get that thing in the field. I went to the field where the first thing I had was problems with the pickup header. Yes, problems with that pickup header. It's a pain in the ass. I got that all going again. But anyways, it got wet. And it got late. And in October, I think it was October. It was October. Um, I was bailing on a park, on a uh, county park, which I still farm the ground. And uh, that... It, the dew had set on the hay, and it was starting to wrap and get stuck and stuff. And it was just that baler sucked. It sucked. The BB9080 pickups, they would wrap. It would just, it would get stuck under the wheels. It would catch in the corners. You make a corner. Oh, just a nightmare. So anyway, MTZ farming. I farm thirty, almost thirty-seven hundred acres of my own. 
I bailed over 7,000 acres in North Carolina, and I've got like 250, 300 to do in New York, and then I'm good. Then I'm done. But, yeah, so do the math. Over 10,000 acres, so 5,000 hectares. <clears throat> so there you go. Anyway, this hay had gotten around the corner. i got to blow my nose. I need a tissue, but I ain't got one. Anyway, uh, this hay came around the corner of the pickup header, and it jammed it up. Didn't jam it up. It just plugged it up. So what I did was I went out and I, I, I picked up the, I picked up the, I think it was yeah, I, whatever. Yeah, I picked up the wind guard, and I kicked it in with my left foot. But when I did that, the hay got the heel of my foot, and took me into that, into that baler. And my foot went along the bottom of the auger. The bottom of my foot went across the auger, and then the spikes, the packer forks, came down on top of my foot, and a wad of hay that my foot was stuck in there. Still turning. Yeah, 4960 running wide open because I'm a dumbass. And uh, so the uh, comes down on top of my foot. Well, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, when you're in a situation like that, you don't feel pain. Well, fuck you. You feel pain. A lot of pain. So I'm stuck in this thing. I'm scared. And what am I going to do? I got this thing blaring wide open. Well, it jammed. Jammed everything up. There's a lot of pressure on my foot. And I could feel the bones breaking. Snap, crackle, pop. Ding! It hurts. I can tell you, I am a lucky man. I am very lucky. I did get lucky. I got very lucky. I should be dead. At the least, I should have lost my foot, um, and I will continue my story now. So I'm stuck in this thing. Tractor's running wide open. I'm yelling for help. Help, help, help. Now, I'm in the middle of a park at, I don't know, 7 in the evening, 8 o'clock. It's dark. No, it wasn't dark. It was not dark. It was still light. So I'm sitting there. I'm standing there, and then I see this smoke coming off the slip clutch. And I'm like, holy shit, this thing's going to burn. Well, there's one thing I hate more than anything. I'd rather be shot than burned to death. I'd rather be stabbed in the heart than burned to death. So, okay. Here I am. I'm like, I got to get out of this thing. I pulled the brake, you know. I'm hanging on to this brake. And it's that's smoking like hell. That's not doing anything. Didn't phase that tractor at all. So I throw that thing up. Anyways, I... I pulled, I couldn't get it out, so what am I going to do? I'm stuck here. This thing's going to burn in a matter of minutes. It's going to catch on fire, and I'm going to burn to death. So, I'm like, shit, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So, I'm freaking out. Anyways, I had my phone, and I'm trying to dial, and they say that you lose all fine motor skill when you are in distress like that, that fight or flight kind of a reaction where you have no fine motor skills. It is a life or death situation. I could not dial my phone. I had one of those uh, Motorola flip phones, and I was pushing the buttons on that thing, and it was just going all over the place. Um, so, wow, TV Thora sailing, damn, wow, I'm glad I didn't get that. So anyway, I took my belt off, and I put it around my leg. I tourniqueted my leg. I was, I was going to cut my leg off at the knee. That was it. That was the solution I had. Uh, so I'm like, man, this sucks. I'm going to have to cut my leg off. And my knife is dull. I mean, the dullest knife there is on this planet was in my pocket at the time or is right here. So I'm like, shit, what am I going to do? So I got the knife out, I got this thing around my leg, and then I thought to myself, fuck that, I'm not gonna, I'm not cutting my leg off. I would have if it caught on fire, but I wasn't that far into it yet. It hadn't caught on fire. So I thought to myself, well, you know what I'm gonna do? Is I'm going to, if I'm gonna lose a leg, I'm gonna pull it off before I have to cut it off. So I took and I got my right foot up onto that baler, that header, and I pushed as hard as I could with my arms until I felt my hip separate. Yeah, my hip separated. 
It is dull. That knife is so freaking dull you couldn't cut a turd with it. Anyway, I felt it separate. I was like, well, that's that sucks. You know, that's that really hurts. But anyway, so I do it again. And I'm like really tense on my ass. You know, it's like, God, I'm going to hold this thing together and try and get that. And I could feel my foot slip a little bit. And I was like, holy shit, I'm going to get out. You know, I'm going to get out. I'm going to live. And I can still feel these things snapping in my foot. And because uh, there's a bunch of bones in your foot, if you didn't know. So, anyhow, oh yeah, a baler will kill you. If I, if it was a crone baler, I would not be here. I would be gone. I would be dead. Pieces, little pieces. It would have sucked. I don't want to think about it. I have nightmares about this thing. Uh, when they tell you you have post-traumatic stress disorder from things, that is one of them. That is one thing that I can guarantee you. I have post-traumatic stress disorder. I get teary-eyed just talking about it. Today is an exception for some reason. Maybe it's because of the because of the uh, coffee. But anyway, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to get out. So I push as hard as I can, and then everything goes blank. It's just like I don't remember getting out. I don't remember hitting the ground. I don't remember shutting off the tractor. I don't remember anything the next thing i remember is my belt is on my my phone is there my knife is in its keeper and i'm leaning against a bale and it's just like everything was quiet and i kind of came to from whatever happened i have no idea honest to god i have no no clue or recollection i didn't hit my head i had no injuries to my head nothing so i was like Huh. All right, then. I thought I was dead. Now, I'm going to tell you, I thought I was dead. I thought that I had died, and this was like a reset. Like, okay, you've been killed, and it was a reset. And then I felt my foot. Ow, that hurts, you know? Like, ow. So I definitely was in this thing, you know? I mean, and I hobbled over to the tractor. And don't ask me how the frig I did this, but I got in the tractor, started it up, and I was like, fuck this. I'm out of here. I'm going home. I didn't call anybody. And then, I, anyways, I'm driving up across the field, and uh, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to uh, look at this. It's supposed to rain tonight, and if it rains tonight, it's already borderline. I'm not going to get this done. But... I, I'm going to check my foot, and if I have a bone sticking out of it, or if it's gashed open, this is what I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to go home. Well, thanks for stopping by, SV Thor of Sailing. I'm sorry I triggered you. It's okay. You survived. You got, yeah, you survived. So, anyway, so did I. Anyways, I pulled the boot off, right? And I'm looking at this, and I pull the boot off, and I don't see any blood. And then I pull the sock off, and I'm like, ew. <laughs> There's a mark on the top of my foot where that bar had pressed on it. And it was like taking a Ziploc bag that has no air in it and then twisting it like that and wrinkling the skin. It had, like, smeared it. So I was like, oh, that, that sucks. So I go to, I'm like, well, it doesn't look too terrible. I'm going to put my foot in this boot and tighten it up, and I'm going to finish bailing. So I get the sock back on, and believe me, my toes were at an awkward position. They didn't look quite right. And Yeah, the boot saved my foot. You see, I'm telling you right now, they're not going to allow that. They don't. I had to allow those brains. So anyways, I, get, I go to put my foot in the boot, and it had swollen pretty quickly in a matter of a minute. In the minute that it took me to do this. So I forced my foot into the boot and I pulled the laces up as tight as I could. And, uh, Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're very lucky. Wes. I was in ICU for a week with my bailer crush injury. Nope. I did not go to the hospital. I didn't. So I get the boot on, I pull the laces up tight and I go back to work and I bailed that. hay. now Timothy was still in school. My dad was milking cows yet. Uh, yeah, we were still milking cows. I think we were milking cows. Maybe we had just gotten rid of those cows. 
I think we had gotten rid of the cows. It was 2011, so yeah, we had gotten rid. Was it 2011? Yeah, we had gotten rid of them not too long before that. Um, so I finished bailing. I come home. I called my dad then and said, "Hey, I've been. I got caught in a bailer. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to need some help to unstrap the load of hay. Will you come with me?" He's like, "Yeah. What do you mean? Are you okay?" I was like, "Ah, don't worry about it. It's not good, but it's not bad either." So the next morning. Yeah, you don't bail with flip-flops on, baby. No, no, no. Not a good idea at all. You know, I don't even bail with shorts. I know Timothy gets in and he, he wears shorts. I'm back. Needed a picture of my winemaking award. Well, there you go. So anyways, I, uh, I went and allowed it to heal on its own. Um, there is a problem in there, uh, but it doesn't bother me. That's the weird thing. Uh, it does not bother me. I don't ha feel any pain. I can feel every part of my foot except where that bar, metal bar came down on top of that, on top of that skin. It severed a nerve in there. Uh, it's just a small spot about the size of a nickel uh, that I can't feel. If I can feel it, but it doesn't feel right. It feels weird. So anyway, I uh, hobbled around with that thing for several months. Okay, don't do that again because I won't have anything to watch. Well, there you go. Well, you'd watch it because I'd probably film myself getting sucked in there. And I have instructed my wife to post my death on here if I get if it's caught on film. Uh, she probably wouldn't do it anyway, but that's that was the deal. So anyhow, I don't go to the hospital. I uh, my girlfriend at the time, it was not Teresa. Uh, she was like, oh, my God, you got to go to the hospital. I'm like, no, 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 just give me some something to drink. I'm going to take a shot of whiskey or whatever, and I'm going to bed. Took a couple of aspirins, which somebody said was a mistake, but somebody said that that was a good thing, so I'm not sure. But anyway, shot of whiskey, a couple of aspirins, 3 o'clock in the morning, I wake up. I don't think I slept very good. I went, and I took that load of hay, and that was that. So that was October, and a month later, that was when I had that malfunction with the trailer and flopped the truck over on its side. It was like a month later, a month and a couple of weeks later, a day later or something like that. It was like, holy shit. Yeah, totally, Captain Morgan. I think it was. You, you must have watched that because I'm pretty sure that's what I drank. Uh, yeah, so we did. I fixed it. I fixed my foot. Now, we'll fast forward to uh, the fall of 2012. Or, no, let's see, was it the fall? It was the winter of 2011. It wasn't even 2012 yet. I think it was 2012. Anyways, my son Timothy was, in, yeah, it was the, he was a senior in high school, 2012. He's like, Dad, I want to go skiing. I was like, okay, you want to go skiing? Go skiing. He went with the school. So he goes with the school, and it was the last day to go skiing. And he said, Dad, can you come skiing with me? I was like, Tim, I don't know. My foot, it hurt at that time. It was still in pain almost over a year later. Still had pain. I was like, well, I don't know if my foot's going to be able to handle that. He says, oh, okay. Um, but I'd really like you to go. I was like, all right, fine. So I go downstairs, get the ski boots, and the mice had it gutted them in the basement. They had gutted them. They had packed it full of bird seed from God knows where because I don't feed birds. Anyways, packed it full of bird seed, probably from the previous owner of this house. Somewhere there was a pack of bird seed, some freaking place, or maybe the girlfriend that I had at the time did had bird seed. But anyway, I go and I purchase new ski boots and put my feet in the boots, and I was like, "This is gonna suck." But if I get to go down the hill once, possibly twice, for with Timothy, it'd be worth the five hundred dollars that I spent on those ski boots. It was an asshole to get them on. It was an asshole to get them on. It was an asshole to get them on because my left foot had grown about that much. When I broke the bones in there, apparently it pretty much took the arch out and extended my foot. Uh, it was kind of weird. So I get up on this, get on the skis, and I'm like, this is not going to go well at all, at all. So I get on the on the ski lift, and I. I found Timothy. He came to the bottom. I had called him. He came to the bottom. We got on the ski lift, and up we go. I get to the top, and I go down the thing, feel the pain, made a turn, made a turn, start down the thing called the Lazy Mile on in Blue Mountain. So the Lazy Mile 
at Blue Mountain. Very nice. Nice, nice one. Made a couple turns and felt a horrendous pop in my foot. Like, I was like, oh. and all that pain went away. Gone. Gone. I was like, what the fuck just happened? Something popped in that foot. Like, it was out of its socket for over a year. Or misaligned somehow for over a year. That thing popped in my foot. Done. I lived down the road from Blue Mountain between 2009 and 2012. Well, there you go. There you go. That was awesome. Oh, it's an awesome ski. It's an awesome ski resort. It's small. It's not too big. It's nice. Most of the old-timer farmers I grew up around was missing fingers or two. Corn pickers took a lot of fingers. Yeah, those, those husker beds were brutal. So, anyway, don't stick your fingers where you won't stick your dick. That's the, uh, that's the motto around here. I need to make a hat that says, don't put your fingers where you won't put your dick, and life will be good. Because there's places people put their fingers that they definitely would not put their dick. So, anyhow, uh, yeah, so that pop in my foot happened in 2012, and I haven't felt any pain since then until my now sister-in-law uh, was rubbing on it, saying, what's this? What's this? I'm like, it was a broken bone. Leave it alone, you know? <laughs> yeah. Terminator style for a year. There you go. Oh, yeah. So, anyhow, I guess we can talk about Farmer MD. Yeah. Uh, the Farmer MD, he needed, he needs to sue the health department. He needs to sue the health department. He needs to sue the health department. My theory on him getting uh, put out of, basically put out of business or shut down is because he posted that he went to a Trump rally back in August. And in that part of the country, I, I'm pretty sure that it, it, they're they're just punishing him for that because you wouldn't dare support the president at all. So there you go. Well, businesses do, but what do you do when you sue the government? Who are you suing? Who are you suing? You're suing the public because they and they don't care because it's free money. You know, they just bring it in and it goes out. So. They tax the rest of the public more to make up for their fuck-ups. You know, there's no accountability. I say it brings a personal lawsuit against the guy that shut him down. Not a public lawsuit. One against the guy. Not as, you know, he's doing his job, but he should show discretion. And the lies that they made up, because he actually filmed everything all through that. And what they accused him of doing wasn't true. And he had it on film. They're That's stupid. But, uh. So that was Farmer MD, Farmer Maryland, and uh, yeah, good guy. He's got a hardware store that they shut down, but we need to strip our officials and employees of immunity. Yeah, agreed. They should be able to, uh, they should be held accountable for their actions, especially when they don't like somebody and it's clear and obvious that they're going after them. Oh yeah, well, I've been shut down. Come on. Uh, YouTube threatens me all the time. Uh, if I, like right now, I've spoken too much about the president and the algorithm has picked it up and I'm pretty sure they're going to unsubscribe about 150 subscribers that I got over the last month. I've been at 143,000 subscribers because of that. If I was in his shoes, if it was me, I'd be in jail. He's too kind. I definitely would go to jail for that cause. And I know there's a couple of people that say, oh, you, you just, you're all talking no action. I don't live in Maryland. I don't have access to the kind of shit that I would like to throw on the health department sidewalk. Um, but if I lived in Maryland and he was, and it was my business that they had shut down, I would definitely go to jail. It would be national headline news and it would bring it national attention and people would be like, hey, wait a minute. Why are they shutting down a hardware store that only gets 100 customers a day? You know, 100 customers a day. Uh, not 100 customers every 15 minutes like the Walmart does in their local town. 100, 100 customers every 15 minutes. Now, he was to wipe down every two hours due to the traffic that he had. It was his guideline, and he did it. What are you saying here? You're gagging maggots for something. Both will gag maggots. Uh, emulsion and Ford friction modifier. 
fish emulsion and Ford friction modifier. Uh, actually, soybeans or soybean meal, Fleischmann's yeast, and water. And in about a week and a half to two weeks, it would become this gray goo that will flow out of a 220-gallon tote. And that's worse than any fish emulsion. Fish emulsion is expensive, uh, but you can get soybeans. And you don't even need a full thing of soybeans, like a third, you know, a, yeah, a third of that tank with water, a third of that tank with uh, soybeans, soybean meal, and uh, the rest is air so that you, because you don't need that. Don't stick your fingy or you won't stick your drink, dinghy. There you go. There you go. That would, uh, that would probably... A-V-E. But isn't that guy a YouTuber, A-V-E? Don't stick your fingy where you won't stick your dink, dinky. Uh, that's probably him. I, I've never watched him, but I, I kind of... Well, he did follow him around with a, with a camera, and yet they did shut him down. Canadian guy, yeah. Fort Dix. That's not far from me. That's not far. I know. I, I think I know right where you are, actually. Scrap farm. Jersey boys in the house. There you go. AVE is good. I've never watched him. I heard of him. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rotten soybeans are the worst smell. They will they will screw you up. So, anyways, on Farmer MD, I hope he gets shit together and gets gets back in business. I would open my doors and take it. Take the fine. Kiss my ass, you bastards. And, uh, you know, maybe even if he did end up in jail, it's the point, you know, it's, it's, it's just the point of the whole thing. You can sue the government, but the government has the power to accept the suit or deny it. They can choose to defend themselves or ignore the suit altogether. Yep. That's, that's correct. And if a police officer, if a, see Tim Hayes, Heisley, they will not allow me to show that they won't. You can't you can't use the dick name. Yeah, so if a police officer hits you, it's your fault. Even if it your insurance takes care of their car and your car. Right. If you hit a school bus or a school if a school bus hits you and it's their fault, doesn't matter. Your insurance pays for it. And if you don't have insurance, guess what? You get to pay for it. So yeah. Yeah, well, I think the majority of farmers do support Donald Trump. Uh, I really do. Uh, you see, we see the long game in his policies. The short game is the sellout of the whole entire country, and we get more money, obviously. But when the whole country fails, then we fail. And we are the last ones to recover from it, and that's a fact. Farmers are the last to recover from, from uh, these uh, problems that we have. Yeah, see, I can't error. Try again. I can't get that one to go. Cops are sovereign citizens. Yeah. Well, uh, they're professional drivers, too. They can speed. Even though it's against the law for them to speed, they do it. And they're allowed to, even though it's against the law. The speed limit's the speed limit. Nobody, nobody writes them a ticket. They can do whatever the hell they want. South Africa is killing the farmers. Yeah, that's a shame. I've seen it. Dumbass Michigan has no fault on accidents. Your insurance pays repairs no matter whose fault, right? Yeah, I know. That's here, too. Uh, Pennsylvania, when that guy smacked into the side of me, I called my insurance company to inform them that I was in an accident. They're like, well, why are you calling us? You need to call their insurance and report your damage to them. I'm like, I don't have any damage. What the hell are you talking about? He said, it wasn't my fault. The guy ran into me. I'm just reporting that this guy's probably going to call and say that I hit him when he ran into the side of me. And he's, they're like, oh, well, if they call, then we'll call you and get your side of the story. I'm like, you don't want me to report this. I'm like, no, you don't need to. I'm like, what the fuck happened to the world? You know? Police are exempt from speed laws. Yeah, and if they kill somebody in their in their pursuit of their duties, yeah, you can't really do anything about it. Yeah, 
grow a tall, vigorous variety. And you will be able to grow corn again. Medium tall. Uh, tall ear set, medium stall kite. That's where you need to be. <clears throat> well, the COVID restrictions, you know, here's the thing. And I'm going to say this now. Oh, where, where was that guy? Midnight Farmer, you get shit from YouTube for saying the F word. Uh, yeah, they demonetize. They do all kinds of stuff. I'm too far into the live stream. The, the algorithm only follows the first five minutes. And then it's it comes in and out from there on. But they constantly monitor the, the typed comments. Please do the bail off challenge. George Saunders is the fastest time so far. Uh, what do you mean? What, that, that Baylor video he did like five years ago? Six years ago? When he was working for J, JWB? No, I didn't get a big M for Christmas. It's unfortunate. Okay, so the government's job is to inform us of the for the of the uh, the pandemic. They should set the guidelines in which we should uh, observe, but they overstep when they are making it illegal to do these things. Look, we are a free people. We are free to make our choices. Shutting down churches is another one. You know what? That is like, you know, why do you think this country is here? Uh, religious tyranny, uh, the Mayflower, that's why they are here. That's why they came here, was to get away from religious persecution. So, and here we are, you know, here we are. So these politicians, uh, we got two years and we got another election coming up and we need to boot these assholes. Boot these assholes. They're not doing their job. They're overstepping their boundaries. They have overstepped here in the United States something fierce, and they need to stop it. You know, everybody can blame Trump for what happens with the COVID-19. He left it. He left it up to the governors of the individual states to do what they are doing. Now, you go to a blue state like what I live in, this shithole. And, uh, well, my part of the state is beautiful, and it is a Republican-held uh, county, but the rest of it, like almost all the rest of it, is Democrat. And, uh, the, oh, they, they mask shame you here. I'm like, fuck off, you assholes. I'd beat them with a stick if I could get away with it. But, uh, yeah, starting with primary, the rhinos. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I agree with that. Get rid of those. Mitt Romney needs to be kicked to the curb, and that's Utah. Kick his stupid ass to the curb. Trump did all he was legally able to do. Yeah, absolutely. He, he did what he was supposed to do. And yet they blamed him for it. When you got a guy that they claim they've elected uh, to, as president-elect, uh, standing up saying, hell, shutting down travel from China. What a xenophobe. What a xenophobe. Well, but it's his fault. You, just, you should have done more sooner. Give me a fucking break. AOC might lose her seat because there are not enough people in her district. Um, I'm hoping. Oh, yeah, that is true. That is true. Her district is is shrinking. Uh, AOC just got reelected with 98 uh, percent of the vote going to her. She will be there for a while, but she'll just move. Just move somewhere else. South Jersey's pretty red. Yeah, there's it's like Hunterton County, but then you start going east. It's the eastern border. The western border isn't so much blue. South Jersey's like a completely yeah, there's yeah. some there's some people. Well, so is North Jersey. I mean, if you go to like what is it, Sussex up there? Freelingheisen, Warren County, and Sussex County. There are people that have never left the county, let alone the state. Oh, I'm good. Eastern Shore Farmer was able to unblock that. I'm looking fresh. I wonder who Lorne Jensen is. J. 
Jeff Skews, you're not really any blue here. Yeah. But I'll bet your county voted blue. <laughs> it's funny how those Dominion machines work. But anyways, I got to go. I got to go eat my breakfast. My wife is probably about ready to shoot me for not doing that. And I'm kind of hungry anyway. It's salt water. And the closer you get to the salt water, the more stupid people get. Yeah, it could be. Too much saline to the brain. Yeah. Adrian Higgins, you're not blocked. Nope, not at all. Why, have you said something? Adrian Higgins. I don't block anybody. I unblocked everybody, but there are a couple that are blocked. But they're just total retards. Uh, if you watched my video the other day, you would know that Stony Ridge Farmer gave me a gift. And go, go, Bobo's sister. Happy holidays. Where do you live? Go, go, Bobo's sister. Give me a date. Uh-oh. My hash browns are getting cold. You cooked them already? Yeah. Oh, baby. Crazy Asian. Go, go, Bobo. I know you live near me. I know who you are. I know who you are. I do. But anyway. <laughs> I think I didn't know who you were. Let's get coffee. Well, my coffee, I've already drank. Hash browns. Yeah, she made them. See, Asians don't have hash browns. They eat rice, so that's their starch. i got to be quiet here. So she's like, hey, how do you make hash browns? I was like, well, you just slice them up and you fry them. It's simple. She's like, well, how do you get them to keep together? I was like, well, I will be out by you all week. Okay, whatever. You know where I live. Anyway, uh, yeah. So she puts them together with egg. And we threw them away. They were horrible. I said, cornstarch. Just to, to get them to stick together, just a little bit of cornstarch. And it's, it works much better. So, anyhow, I am going to go eat my breakfast. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.